Great, thanks so much, Cassandra. And uh, thanks so much for the speakers or the organizers for giving me a chance to present about this research today. I'm really excited about it. Um, and like Cassandra said, I am primarily studying um, neural mediated cardiac proliferation in the simple uh, tunicate C squirt uh, Ciona robusta. So, my central question is do neurons promote cardiac proliferation? So here's a little roadmap of the talk. First, we're gonna talk about how the heart and brain connect in vertebrates. Then we're gonna talk about why would we study this in tunicates? And then a little bit about the Siona heart and brain. And then we're gonna get into some unpublished data on uh, neuropeptide uh, mediated cardiac proliferation. Um, so in vertebrates, there's multiple neuron to heart connections. Uh, the most relevant for this is actually uh, the vagal nerve, which is a cranial nerve. The cell bodies in the hindbrain that extend out, innervate the cardiac plexus, which essentially um, ends up decreasing the heart rate um, through cardiac pacemaker cells. Um, the cardiac aspect of the vagus nerve is uh, peptidergic, meaning it secretes uh, neuropeptides, one of these neuropeptides being uh, substance P. So uh, a pretty recent paper has actually demonstrated that substance P is sufficient to increase cardiomyocyte progenitor proliferation in rats. Uh, this, these data are from an explant of a right atrium of a rat, and we could see this increase when we add exogenous substance P neuropeptide. And an even more recent paper has actually shown that all three um, receptors for substance P called neurokinin are actually expressed in heart uh, pacemaker cells. Um, so there's some literature that directly tests the role for the vagus nerve in uh, proliferation. Um, basically, the first week after mice are born, their hearts are still able to proliferate, especially in, in response to injury. So what we see here is um, a myocardial infarction assay where we see more proliferating cells in green hair compared to the control. However, when you cut the vagus nerve, you basically lose this injury-induced proliferation. So I think this is really fascinating and um, really, I think, warrants further investigations into perhaps vagal-mediated cardiac proliferation in vertebrates. Um, and then you could see this uh, significant difference in proliferative cells here. Uh, so why would we study this in tunicates? Um, well, throughout my scientific career, I've basically tried all the model organisms, and tunicates are probably my favorite. Um, they have a very simple genome. There's not a lot of redundancies. So if you have a receptor and a ligand, there's usually just one and not a bunch of paralogs to worry about. They're the invertebrate closest to vertebrate, vertebrates. If we look at this um, uh, maximum likelihood uh, tree, basically what we have here is based off amino acid identity. Uh, tunicates are right here and uh, humans and other vertebrates are right here. Um, it's really easy to genetically perturb these animals in a high throughput way. Within 20 minutes, you could get uh, thousands of transgenic animals. They're very transparent, which makes them really easy to image. And there's many more reasons as well. Um, so the Siona uh, nervous system is relatively simple and fairly conserved. This is a swimming larval stage of the Siona, which goes through several life stages. Um, it has a conserved region similar to a forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain, and spinal cord, uh, similar to mouse and other vertebrates. However, um, after it undergoes metamorphosis past this larval stage, it basically stops moving around and gets stuck to the bottom of boats or like rocks and things like that. And it basically actually loses most of its nervous system, except basically for the hindbrain. So I kind of think of this juvenile animal as a big hindbrain, um, as well as an adult animal. So here's its brain right here. I'm using a panneuronal reporter that should basically label all neurons within the animal. And what I just want you to appreciate is how easy it is to visualize these. Um, I didn't have to use a clearing technique or anything and how there's a bunch of projections basically to a lot of different organs within the animal. Another thing I want you to know is this uh, reporter that the Siona literature considers panneuronal is actually a peptidergic uh, neuron marker. So their nervous system is really highly peptidergic, meaning they make uh, neuropeptides. So next, we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about the Siona heart and brain. So the first thing we wanted to do is really define what cell types are present in this simple juvenile heart. So this is after metamorphosis when the heart's uh, starting to beat. 
Um, basically, what we found, um, unsurprisingly, is we have this uh, thin pericardial epithelial kind of layer that surrounds the heart like a big sphere. We have these myocardial cells in the middle that undergo peristaltic contraction. And then we have these really peculiar um, cells called the um, undifferentiated line, which um, over about a century ago were suggested to be the progenitor cells in Siona, but no one's really followed up on that. Um, I would love to talk more about this project, but basically um, through a series of experiments in the lab, such as uh, EDU uh, pulse chase experiments, which labels newly proliferating cells, we actually see most proliferation is not occurring in the myocardial tube, but it seems to be occurring in the undifferentiated line. And furthermore, we saw uh, this interesting structures at the end of the undifferentiated line, which haven't been noticed before, where it's usually a single cell layer thick, but ends up forming these clusters of nuclei on either end. And that's actually where we see the most uh, proliferation is assayed by EDU. So uh, basically our model uh, would be that neuronal cells uh, secrete uh, these neuropeptides and that these UL progenitor cells should have a receptor for these neuropeptides. Some predictions from this model would be that there's co-localization of neurons in this progenitor cell population. There would be a neuropeptide receptor expressed in these cells or somewhere in the heart, and that blocking this neuropeptide signaling should disrupt heart proliferation and morphogenesis. Uh, so neural, the first thing we did was basically use that same uh, pan-neuronal reporter uh, transgenic stable line to basically map out if there are neurons within the juvenile heart. So again, this is a juvenile heart labeled with DAPI. This is with filiatin. You can see the myocardial fibers. And what we see um, is there's actually these neuronal-like cells that are actually have their cell bodies, their nucleus within the heart itself, and that these seem to co-localize um, with these clusters on the very end of the undifferentiated line. So I don't want to get trouble and call these neurons. We're not exactly sure what they are, it's hard to kind of define cells, but they do have some um, cardiac reporters and also neuronal reporters found within. For the purposes of this talk, I'm gonna be calling them cardiac intrinsic neurons. Uh, but what I was really interested in is if there's central ganglion or kind of brain neural input to the heart directly. And what we see when we use the stable line um, that express this panneuronal reporter is a lot of these um, neurites kind of come down. And if we magnify where the heart is right here, this is one of those intrinsic uh, type neurons, is we see these really fine projections when you really ramp up the laser intensity on the confocal. We see these in older juveniles, and we also see them in very young animals, these uh, connections basically to the ventral intrinsic uh, neurons. So that's a little bit about the Siona heart and nervous system, but now let's get into the data for testing if neuropeptides have a role in mediating uh, proliferation. So one prediction, like I said, was that there should be co-localization of neurons in the proliferative uh, zone, which there seems to be. And also the next uh, prediction would be that there's a receptor for neuropeptide signaling in these progenitor cells, or perhaps in these intrinsic neurons where um, you actually see the proliferation. So to start to um, address this, basically what we did was um, single cell RNA-seq on an adult heart, which actually uh, continued to proliferate. And what we see is our clustering actually works um, quite well. For example, we have this cardiomyocyte marker that enriched in this uh, one cluster right here. And what we were really excited to see was this neurokinin or substance P receptor expressed really quite specifically in this little tiny cluster right here. So of course, we really wanted to see what other uh, defining features there were of this little tiny cluster. And what we saw with, is that these are ty uh, tyros uh, tyrosine hydroxylase positive uh, cells. Uh, tyrosine hydroxylase is present in neurons, but it's also present in cardiac pacemaker cells. Um, when we use a reporter uh, for uh, ty tyrosine hydroxylase, what we see is it appears to be pretty specific for one of these intrinsic cardiac neuron type uh, cells, which may be pacemakers, but we uh, need more evidence for that. And again, this is uh, near where we see these local proliferation clusters within the heart. 
Um, so our current model is that the neurokinin seems to be expressed in these Th positive intrinsic type uh, neuron cells that are signaling to the undifferentiated line. We also have other uh, reporter data suggesting that substance P, which is called tachykinin in Siona, is released from these extrinsic or uh, brain uh, neurons uh, that connect to these neurons. So to start to test if uh, neurokinin actually has a role um, in this uh, proliferation, basically what we did was inhibit neurokinin uh, pharmacologically. So what we did was use the drug called a prepotent, which is a neurokinin one antagonist. And we basically let the animals grow up into an early juvenile stage right after metamorphosis when the heart starts beating. Um, and then uh, grew them with a DMSO or the drug for four days. And um, basically what we predicted if our hypothesis was true, is that the number of undifferentiated line cells would actually be quite reduced compared to this time course that we established in um, other untreated animals. So uh, what we see is uh, DMSO-treated animals have uh, normal morphology, normal uh, expected uh, undifferentiated line length. When we look at the aprepotent treated animals, basically what we see is a really uh, uh, kind of subtle reduction in undifferentiated line number. The rest of the animal's body size seemed uh, very similar, so this seems quite specific for the heart. And so we see this significant reduction in the number of undifferentiated line cells when we um, inhibit neurokinin signaling, which actually kind of matches with when we started the time course, the number of undifferentiated line cells versus those uh, uh, at the end of the time course. So this might suggest that it's either neurokinin's promoting uh, undifferentiated line cell proliferation or it's uh, preventing uh, cell death from occurring. Um, so another approach we use to get at this question is we used a tissue-specific uh, CRISPR uh, perturbation um, of neurokinin using the heart lineage, um, which is called uh, MESP. So this turns on uh, really early, actually, in embryonic development and basically will knock out neurokinin in um, all the cardiac uh, cells. And we let these animals grow until they had a robustly uh, growing heart. Um, so what we see when we knock out neurokinin is these really severe um, kind of phenotypes of the heart morphogenesis. We see some contractile um, cells still present, but largely uh, the pericardium is intact and it seems kind of specific for the myocardium. Um, Basically, uh, when we quantify this in both live and fixed animals, we see a significant um, number of animals with this abnormal morphology. We think this isn't 100% penetrant because we're using electroporations, which don't get into all the um, animals when we electroporate them. Another approach we used was using a tissue-specific um, CRISPR perturbation of tachykinin, which is substance P, basically in this panderonal uh, lineage. So we're knocking out the ligand in this case. And again, we see a really similar phenotype um, when we knock out tachykinin, basically in this peptidergic lineage. And uh, what we see here is also a significant reduction in the number of morphologically normal animals. If we look at this uh, with DAPI and phyllidin staining, we could see these are morphologically quite abnormal. Um, it's hard to tell if there's still undifferentiated lines, so we're working on some reporters for these different cell types and stuff like that, but obviously most of the myocardial tube is gone. So basically our model is that tachykinin is being secreted from the central uh, nervous system or the brain basically to signal onto neurokinin, which then uh, causes some cue or activity within these Th positive cells that affects the undifferentiated line from either proliferating or dividing into myocardial progenitor cells. Uh, so here's some future and current directions we're working on, which I'll get back to in a second. Um, but real quick, I just uh, wanted to thank uh, my lab. My mentor has been really supportive and great, um, letting me do like neuroscience stuff, like let, letting me bring that into his lab. My colleague CJ Pickett has showed me a lot of Siona things because this is uh, the first position I've had working on this animal. And here's a bunch of uh, students, the ones in bold are ones that contributed and will uh, be co-authors on this paper. 
And I really wanted to thank our external collaborators as well, as well as my previous mentors um, too. So with that, I'm happy to take um, any questions. Fantastic, thank you, Hannah. Um, so we've got a question that's come in in the Q&A that came in earlier, so I just want to get that one in from Andrea Matthews. Would like to know, do you extract hearts or do whole organism imaging to look at the intrinsic neurons and the cell numbers in the heart? Yeah, so one of the great things about using CO in a juvenile is, is we look at the whole intact animal, so all the neural signaling should still be intact, unlike um, if you had to dissect it to do these assays. Mm -hmm, very nice. And then we've got another uh, question, which is, do you know when during development these uh, these neurons or maybe, you know, these putative neurons, when do they innervate the heart? Do you know? Yeah, that's a really good question that we still need to nail down. We've seen it as early as um, like two days after metamorphosis, but um, we really need to get more stable lines again and really nail that. But uh, basically, we think it happens essentially as soon as the heart is beating. So we think this occurs very early on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, do you know the lineage origin of these putative neurons? I'm wondering if there would be a way to just stop them from forming very early and see what the consequences are. Yeah, they should be Hox3 um, derived uh, population similar to the hind brain. So um, I, I agree. I think that would be really interesting to use CRISPR to just get rid of them from the get go um, and, and see what happens there. So yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. We have a question from Mark Lasnig asking if this uh, neurons innervating the heart, is this an evolutionarily conserved process or feature where neurons are innervating hearts? Yeah, um, so what's really interesting is um, basically the common ancestor before uh, tunicates um, does not have a vagal innervation. So I'm actually really personally interested in the future and pursuing if uh, tunicates actually were the first to get like vagal-like innervation and showing if this is really similar to the vagus nerve or not. It's still kind of an open question, but evidence we do have is it's also cholinergic, just like our vagus nerve and also peptidergic, like I said. So, so within the chordates, including this guy, some similarities, but then outside of chordates, do we know anything about that? Um, well, it seems like, like in other uh, bilateral urines, um, like mollusks and stuff like that, they have, um, they don't have, they have, um, have like a different kind of uh, heart innervation that's not like present in the common ancestor, but um, mm -hmm. they have, seem to have like convergently produced their mm -hmm. own way of having neural mediated uh, regulation. Okay. And last question for you, do Siona larvae have pacemaker cells? Um, we're not sure yet. Um, basically, when you look at that PC2 reporter that I was using, it doesn't show up um, with the cardiac progenitor cells, so we don't think so. But of course, um, we could always look at more markers and, and test that out. But they're not really contracting until they undergo metamorphosis. Okay, great. Hannah, thanks a lot. That was really fascinating.